Welcome to Electron Line, and in our quest to figure out what a photon is, now we're going to take a look at a photon and its momentum. Yes, we do know that a photon has momentum, even though it doesn't have any mass. So going back to the original equation of relativity, where the total energy of a particle is equal to its rest mass energy, plus its momentum times the speed of light quantity squared. Now, of course, in the case of a photon, it does not have any mass, so that portion will go to zero. And if we then take the square root of both sides, we can see that the energy of a photon is equal to the momentum times the speed of light, which means that the momentum of a photon must be equal to its energy divided by the speed of light. And since the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, we can say that hf divided by the speed of light is equal to the momentum of the photon. Since we typically like to work in terms of wavelengths, especially when we're going to include the Compton scattering, we can also say that the speed of light c is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, which means that the frequency can be written as the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So replacing that here, we can say this is equal to h times c over c times lambda. So instead of f, we can write c over lambda. The c's cancel out. So finally, we can say that the momentum of a photon is equal to the Planck's constant divided by the wavelength of the photon. So when a photon then, for example, hits a particle, and of course, when it hits a particle, photons don't hit really. They just, it, they just interact between the changing electric field that they set up and the charge of the particle that they're coming in contact with. And again, contact is a kind of a loose term. We can see that there's then a change in momentum, and that change in momentum or the momentum imparted on the particle will be equal to h over lambda in the case of a photon. Now, it could be that there's only a partial change in the momentum so that the photon comes back with a reduced momentum and the difference in momentum has then been imparted on the particle. So we're going to try and figure that out when we interact between a photon, when we look at the action between a photon and an electron, like in Compton scattering. So we're going to take the example, to make it a little bit easier to work with, that the photon is inbound hits the electron and then ricochets off the electron coming back in the opposite direction with a, a angle of 180 degrees. So that's a scattering angle of 180 degrees. And then the resulting difference in momentum would then be imparted on the electron, which then will fly in this direction with a final velocity. So we know that momentum is conserved and that the quantum mechanics state energy should be conserved as well. And since the, the reflected photon will have a longer wavelength, Therefore, it will have lost some energy. That energy would then have been imparted on the electron. So we should be able to see that the change in momentum will be given to the electron and the change in energy will be given to the electron. In each case, the final velocity calculated with each of those interactions should be the same. All right, let's find out if it is. So first of all, what we want to do is want to go ahead and see how the wavelength changed in this case. And so we can say that uh, lambda prime minus lambda initial, and of course that should be a sub dot right here, lambda initial is equal to h over mc times 1 minus the cosine, and of course the cosine in this case is going to be 180 degrees. And plug in the numbers, this comes out to be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Of course that's the mass of a electron in terms of kilograms, and then C would be 3 times 10 to the 8. And then, of course, the cosine of 180 is minus 1. Minus times of minus 1 is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So we multiply this times 2. And that will give us the change in the wavelength of our photon. So we get 6.626 e to the 34 minus divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus and divide by 3 e to the 8 and then multiply times 2 and that would be the change in the wavelength of 4.85 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. All right, so now we have to imagine what would be the wavelength of the incoming photon. Let's say that in this case, we're going to make that into 100 picometers which is equal to 0 0.1 nanometers, which is equal to uh, 100 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. So let's say that that's a pretty energetic photon. That would be a photon of an X-ray. And so let's say there's an X-ray photon impacting the, the um, electron. What will be the change in the momentum in this case? So momentum initially is going to be H times the wavelength initially. 
And so we had an initial wavelength of 100 picometers. This becomes 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 100 times 10 to the minus 12. And just to make sure I get this right, 6.626 e to the 34 minus divided by 100 e to the 12 minus, and that would be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 24. And of course, the momentum would be kilograms, kilograms, meters per second. So those are, those are the units of momentum. The final momentum. P prime is going to be equal to H divided by lambda prime, which is going to be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by, now what's the change in the wavelength? Well, the difference in the wavelength is this many meters, 4.85 times 10 to the minus 12. So we can say that lambda prime is equal to lambda initial plus the change in the wavelength. And so it would be 100 times 10 to the minus 12 meters plus 4.85 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. That means that the new wavelength of the scattered photon is going to be 104.85 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. So when we plug that in here, we get 104.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And what do we get? 6.626 e to the 34 minus divided by 104.85 e to the 12 minus equals, and so the momentum of the scattered photon is going to be 6.320 times 10 to the minus 24 kilograms meters per second. So that gives us a change in momentum. So the change in momentum, now also we have to be careful, because in one case, the momentum is to the right, that's a positive momentum. Here it's a momentum to the left, which is a negative momentum. So the difference in momentum is basically the sum of the two, because we're subtracting a negative momentum on the way back. So that means that the change in momentum, the delta P, is equal to P initial minus P final. But remember, that is a negative quantity. So this is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 24 minus a minus 6.320 times 10 to the minus 24. So the change in the momentum of the photons is going to be, so we have this number and we're going to add to that plus 6.626 e to the 24 minus. And so we get a change of 1.295 times 10 to the minus 23 kilograms meters per second. So that would be the momentum given to the electron. So how fast will the electron move away from there with that kind of change in momentum? Remember that initially the electron has no momentum, momentum at all, it just stood there, well, hypothetically of course, and so now it gets hit by the photon, the electron will then get pushed away, and so the loss in momentum, because this is really the loss of momentum of the photon, will then be the gain of momentum for the electron. So therefore, since the momentum final of the electron is going to be m times v, we can say that v final of the electron is going to be the p final divided by the mass, and the momentum gained by the electron is the momentum lost by the photon, which would be 1.295 times 10 to the minus 23 divided by the mass, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And so we can say that the final velocity is 3.3. For that, I need to put on my glasses to make sure I find the correct decimal point. So there's a 3, uh, 6. So that would be 14.2 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. So that's less than 1% of the speed of light, so it's not relativistic, so we can go ahead and go and use that number. So that is the final velocity of the electron after the photon ricochets, so to speak, off of the electron. Now, we should also have conservation of energy. So what is the change in the energy of the photon? Well, we know that the energy of the photon is equal to h times f, which is equal to h times c over lambda. So again, we can find the initial energy, and the initial energy would be h times c divided by lambda, which in this case would be 100 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. 
And so we know that h is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, 6.626 e to the 34 minus, times the speed of light, 3 e to the 8, divided by 100 e to the 12 minus, and we get an initial energy of 1 point, mm, I'll make that 988, 988 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. And again, let me just put in my glasses to make sure I get these numbers right. 1.988 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. E final is equal to HC divided by the new wavelength of 104.85 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. And so we multiply this times 100, divide by 104.85, and now we get 1.896 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. So what is the change in the energy? Well, the change in energy would be equal to initial energy minus the final energy, which is equal to 1.988 times 10 to the minus 15 joules minus 1.896 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. And so the change in energy will be 1.988 e to the 15 minus equals and it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 9.22 times 10 to the minus 17 joules. So that is the change in the energy of the photon by scattering off the electron. Okay, so where does that energy go? Well, that energy, of course, has to go to the, to the electron. And so the, now the kinetic energy of the electron, kinetic energy of the electron, which is equal to 1 half, mv squared, final, of course, that's the final velocity squared, so we should be able to figure out the velocity based on the conservation of energy, which means that the velocity final is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, that would be equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy change, which is 9.22 times 10 to the minus 17, divided by the mass of 9, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. All right, let's see if we get that correct answer. So times 2 divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus. Take the square root of that, and the velocity is 14.2 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. And this should be the same as this, and it is indeed the same, the very same result. So here we have kind of an interesting concept for a photon. A photon can come along, it has a particular energy, a particular momentum, based upon its initial wavelength. It then scatters off of an electron. In this case, the example said that it scattered straight back where it came from, so we have a scattering angle of 180 degrees. From the Compton scattering, we were able to calculate the change in the wavelength, and so from that, we can calculate a change in the momentum, right here, and we can calculate a change in the energy. And from that, we're able to calculate the final velocity of the electron both in terms of the conservation momentum and the conservation energy. So what this really is showing us about a photon is that the photon, just like any other particle, has momentum, it has energy, and it can impart that momentum and energy on another particle through an interaction that looks like a collision. Of course, it's not exactly a collision, but it's like a collision, and it just acts just like a particle. Wow, a photon, which is a small chunks of energy, part of electromagnetic radiation, part of the electromagnetic changes in the field, electric and magnetic field through space, actually can act like a particle. And so, slowly but surely, through all these various experiments, we're able to figure out what a photon is. It's quite amazing, and if you're still interested, keep watching, because we have some more videos in store for you all about what is a photon.